Hello, welcome to my uh, presentation on effective, effective communication, um, in particular face-to-face -face handover. My name is Kate and I'm a childminder. Okay, by the end of this presentation I hope to have informed you about the key principles of effective communication, my chosen aspect of communication, any barriers that may come up to do with communication, what can happen when communication is ineffective, um, and comparisons with other types of communication, both within my setting and in another. Um, you should, um, I will also talk about theories to support my practice and give you a conclusion at the end. So what is communication? Communication is the imparting or exchanging of information by speaking, writing, or using some other medium. As I'm doing with you today, I am communicating. Um, shown here is the Shannon Weaver model um, by which a person has an idea, um, it's encoded, it's transmitted, there is another person who receives the information, the message is decoded, and then there is um, some sort of feedback confirming that the message is understood. Um, as you can see, communication requires at least two people. Um, this cycle can be applied to any situation where communication is involved, but the example that I'll be using today for my presentation um, is reflecting on the daily face-to-face drop-off at some pick-up times. So why is effective communication necessary in the early years? Um, involving a parent in their child's learning and development means better outcomes for the child. Um, it builds trust and gives non-verbal children a voice when working well with parents. These three examples here, the Common Core, EYFS and Every Child Matters, all support the use of effective communication in early years. And in the case of the EYFS, it's statutory for all early year settings um, to promote good communication with parents to ensure the best outcomes for children in their care. Um, a very sad example of what can happen when communication is ineffective um, is the serious case review of poor little baby Peter, or baby P, um, who died on the 3rd of August. Throughout the entire report, which unfortunately I read one Saturday morning, um, consistently showing a lack of effective communication between all agencies involved, um, there is an example that as I'm sure some time I'll, I'll move on from that now. Um, but it was indeed a very sad example of ineffective communication. So on to my setting and using Driscoll's reflective cycle, um, I'm reflecting on the day-to-day -day pick up and drop off of the children. Um, so what happens? So each day the parents bring their child to me um, and then in the evening they pick up. So what happens at these pick-up times, and what do we talk about? Firstly, at drop-off, each parent has a staggered arrival time. This means that my setting is inclusive because each parent has the same amount of time to talk to me in the morning. Um, we have a brief two-way face-to-face discussion um, on all matter of things, um, but generally um, about the child and anything that may affect them during the day. Um, in the evenings, there is longer time. Again, times are staggered. I make sure that when a child starts with me that they're not being picked up at the same time as other children. Um, and it's usually around 10 minutes. Um, that gives us time to talk face to face about our daily activities, what the child's been up to, um, if they've had any issues, um, any development wow moments, um, and generally the activities of the day. Um, each parent is treated with the same regard and sharing, is, sharing of information is kept specific to the child. Um, as mentioned in, earlier, in an earlier slide, uh, the sharing of information helps the parents to be informed about their child and builds on the partnership of which both the EYFS and the Common Core site as being central to a child's learning and development. So now what? On the next slide, we'll be looking at barriers. Again, thinking of the Shannon Weaver model, any of the barriers shown here will hinder the cycle of communication, creating a noise or distraction in the model. 
happening that's going to disrupt the, the cycle of communication. It is important for me as the sender to ensure that the receiver, the parent, has understood correctly what it is I have communicated to them. So the barriers in my setting are time. Five minutes in the morning is not very much time and if they get stuck in traffic uh, or they're running late, often we don't get that time. Um, so to overcome that barrier, um, we I use electronic communication as a backup. So they can still drop off, we still see each other, but we'll say, you know, I'll text you later or I'll email you later. Mm -hmm. So we can still have that communication. Um, the child, uh, sometimes it can be awkward to talk in front of the child, um, or children are just generally tired and not willing to stand and wait while you're talking to their parent. Um, and the distraction of a grumpy child can cause communication to be very ineffective. Um, so to overcome this, again, electronic communication or a telephone call. Um, language, when talking to parents about a child's development or behaviour, I should have regard to the language I'm using. Bernstein talk theory talks of two types of language codes, the elaborated code and the restrictive code. Um, I would use the elaborated code to talk to parents to ensure that they get an explanation that they would understand the restrictive code, so the use of abbreviations like EYFS is more suited when talking to my peers. Um, also parents having English as a second language, again this links back to the Shannon Weaver model, I need to ensure information is received correctly and there is no misunderstanding. Um, to, to overcome this, um, maybe email would be better because they would be able to translate any words using Google Translate or using simpler language or even giving more time. So how do I know that my method, my chosen method of communication works? I struggled with this really badly. I didn't know how to, how can I prove that it works? And then I thought of Survey Monkey. So I surveyed my parents and four small questions, but it gave me the answers that I needed. Um, so the results were that they all said that they liked face-to-face -face communication and they thought it was the best way to communicate with me. Um, they all said there were no negative aspects of communicating face to face. I didn't pay them, I think. 100% <laughs> said the face to face communication they receive is extremely effective, which is good. And uh, a third said they preferred electronic communication. And this is one of the parents I look after in the school holidays, um, so I don't, I don't see her every day. So to keep her up to date with what's going on. Um, and then two thirds said that face to face was their preferred method. Comparisons. Um, I spoke to Mickey last week and we just quickly went over the differences um, between my setting and her setting when talking about face to face. Um, so, similarities between my setting and hers was that there are set drop off and pick up times and staff can speak specifically to parents and share concerns. Although, within Mickey's setting, um, communication is in the, usually in the form of a communication book. Um, the differences are that there's less time for parents to talk one-to-one -one, um, and face-to-face -face, face communication is brief. Um, and parents are encouraged to come in and help and they offer special mornings for fathers to come in and talk face-to-face -face with the staff. Um, I also compared it to electronic message within my setting. Um, there were very few similar similarities, obviously, other than the actual the information that you're giving. Um, but the differences were that the written word can often be misunderstood. Um, there's no, no real way for clarification. Um, and again, using the Shannon Weaver not model, no feedback unless you get a reply. So, and uh, electronic messages are difficult to convey feeling or empathy. So ways I could improve. I really like communication books. I have used them in the past. I don't use them now, but after talking to Mickey, she said it's been really good, especially with the parents with English as a second language. So I definitely think that, if not with the parents that I use, that I have at the moment, in the future, this may be a really good way of improving my setting um, and very simple to implement.
and a parents' evening. I know a few childminders who are already offer parents' evening, um, and it would be good to ha actually have a formal time where we can sit down and discuss with or without the children there, but at least that we can we can sit down and we don't have time constraints. So, in conclusion, communication is a two-way process which involves the sending and receiving of code or information. Communication or working with parents is statutory within the UIFS guidelines. Effective communication between carers and parents leads to better outcomes for children. And face-to-face -face discussion is an effective way to communicate with parents, and my parents like it. And when there is a lack of communication, the outcome for children can be catastrophic. Thank you for watching. Apologies if I talk.